Hello and welcome. I hope that you are having a fantastic day. We're going to talk about Bitcoin news today. Now, Bitcoin whales, are they in fear of missing out? That's what we're going to look at. We have seen an enormous amount of activity and action from Bitcoin whales. In fact, we're, the things that we're going to look at in this video is we're going to look at the CME Bitcoin futures chart and we're going to see how whales are jumping in with ferocity. We're going to look at is Bitcoin facing strong resistance near 12,000? We're going to take a look at how a weaker dollar is driving Bitcoin to new highs. And we're going to look at the world's biggest intelligence firm buys $21,000 worth of Bitcoin for $250 million. I'll tell you what, the whales are active. The whales are getting involved. They're spending millions and billions on Bitcoin. So what are you waiting for? Are they going to leave you in the dust? Let's take a look. Should I buy Bitcoin now or should I wait? We're going to give you ideas. This is what this channel is all about. This channel is about giving you ideas to help you take profits and avoid losses. Can we get this video to 99 likes? Smash that like button. It really helps us out and we could use the help. So I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. This is my opinion. My background is in computer science, not in finances. So with any kind of investment, especially cryptocurrency, it involves substantial risk of loss. Please read the rest of this paragraph. It'll help you avoid losses and take profits. So when you think about Bitcoin, and you think about investing in it, I want to encourage you to think about a three-year time period. If you were to buy $1,000 worth of Bitcoin and three years later you sold it, maybe you bought $1,000 worth of Bitcoin on January 1, 2017, sold it three years later on December 31st, 2019, you would have sold it for $7,206. Now, as you can see by the rest of this chart, every year, in fact, forget about January 1. If you pick any date throughout the entire year over the life of Bitcoin, if you bought Bitcoin, held it for three years, you would have made some money. Now, sometimes the money is not huge. You can see this year your $1,000 only became $1,180. But hey, if you look at investing in the stock market during the same three years, having an 18% return over a three-year period, even in the stock market, was actually quite a feat. And so in most years, you did substantially better than that. But the worst years, you still turned something of a profit. I encourage you to take, that, take a look at that a little bit deeper. Go find yourself data that shows you the price of Bitcoin every single day for the entire life of Bitcoin and start looking at three-year time periods and go back and see if you can find a period of time where you would lose money. Now we know that, that past performance is no guarantee for future performance, but I'll tell you what, that is a strong and useful information. All right, let's look at 2020. Bitcoin's price for this year, the year to date, January 1, 2020, Bitcoin was at $7,174. Today, August 12th, 2020, Bitcoin is at $11,467. Now the percentage growth so far in 2020, and we're only, we're eight months, and 12 days into the year was a 60% return on your money. Where could you have invested your money, gone through a dramatic uh, loss during March when the COVID and the pandemic came out, and yet still eight months later, August, a few months after March, you would be looking at a 60% return on your dollar Unbelievable. 
But Bitcoin has always had times where it shows tremendous growth in short periods of time. And it happens in about a four year cycle. And so during that four years, there's typically about a two or three, two year period, two and a half year period where you can see dramatic growth from Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. It has about a year or so where it kind of trends sideways. And then there's about six months to a year or so where it actually drops in price. So it hits a brand new all time high. It comes back down, but it takes weeks and months for it to come all the way down. And so really, uh, I, I, as you can tell by what I'm saying, I think it's a great opportunity. That is my opinion. That's not financial advice. That's what I tell my friends and relatives. And I created this YouTube channel because I wanted to tell it and share that with more people so that I could share it with you. Now, uh, all of this, this particular image and article came out of Cointelegraph. I'm gonna put the link to the full article in the description on the YouTube channel so that if you want, you can go and read it. Now, this is just one piece of information that they actually gave in this article um, to talk about how institutions have a fear of missing out. And this particular um, video, this particular article, the first thing they talk about is the Bitcoin futures and the total in open interest and in volumes. And you can see by this chart how it has absolutely had a parabolic run down here in August of 2020 and how the number of open interest and the volume of those open interest contracts on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange has gone up dramatically. They're looking at a double, approximately a double to triple the volume in the last month or so during the month of August. Now, the majority of those open interest volumes in those Bitcoin futures are coming from institutions because a single contract is five Bitcoins or about 50 grand. And there's not a lot of people who have 50 grand to invest in these open futures. And so the vast majority of it are whales that are buying up these contracts. And so we can see that the whales are starting to get involved just because of this volume. Now, one thing that they did not mention in this article is another place you can look is what's happening on Grayscale. We know because of the SEC filings that Grayscale has to produce that 84, 82% of all of the dollars invested in Grayscale Bitcoin trusts and their other cryptocurrency trusts, because they have about, I think it's about eight or 10 cryptocurrency trusts that Grayscale now manages, one for Ethereum, one for Litecoin, etc. cetera. Um, those have seen dramatic increases over the last six months and nine months, and those increases are being driven by institutions. Another area that I thought was quite interesting is an article that came out today. The world's biggest business intelligence firm buys 21,000 Bitcoin for around $250 million. MicroStrategy confirms it has Bitcoin as its primary treasury reserve asset as institutional uptake takes a dramatic bullish step forward. Now, wait a minute. Think about that for a second. A business is out there operating and they have bills to pay. They got to pay light bills and electric bills. They got to pay office supply bills. They got to pay bills to vendors. If they have a physical product, then they have to pay bills to whoever's making that product. If they make the product themselves, then they've got to pay for the employees that work in their factory, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There's lots of bills that have to be paid. And so in order to pay those bills, lots of companies have large cash reserves in order to keep the money flowing out to the people they owe money to and the money that's coming in from their customers. But this particular uh, firm is a $1.5 billion company and they're gonna keep their excess cash in Bitcoin because they're concerned that if they leave it in US dollars, that it's gonna lose its value. Wow, that is remarkable. 
This investment reflects our belief that Bitcoin, as the world's most widely adopted cryptocurrency, is a dependable store of value and an attractive investment asset with more long-term appreciation potential than just simply holding cash. And so there, this $1.5 billion company is taking its cash and converting it to Bitcoin because they see that that's a better place to keep their financial reserves. And obviously they feel confident enough that they can cash it out, so to speak, that they can cash out their Bitcoin holdings with little or no notice in order to pay bills or do whatever they need to do financially. That is a huge bullish sign to, that reveals to us the, the thinking. Now, you, know, you got to understand, these companies are what's called smart money. Now, it's not to say that the retail investor is dumb, but it is to say that these guys, I mean, if you have a $1.5 billion company, you have a bunch of employees and you have a group of employees that would be involved in, in researching these kinds of decisions because you're not just going to make that kind of a decision lightly to hold Bitcoin instead of holding cash. And so you're going to have those employees spend time, spend money, maybe travel. They're going to do research to make sure that this is a good decision. And the result of all of that research, all of that effort, all of that insight, all of the discovery, all of the different conversations that they had, the result is that they took action. And the action they took was to buy $250 million worth of Bitcoin. Can you imagine how many other things that they considered before they landed on Bitcoin? They may have talked about gold. They may have talked about silver. They may have talked about hundreds of other kinds of investments because there's hundreds or thousands of different places that you could invest $250 million. But out of all of the different possibilities for holding their cash, they chose Bitcoin instead of dollars. That is huge. Weaker dollar drives Bitcoins to new highs. Now this kind of ties in with the previous article because as the U.S. Mint, as the Federal Reserve is printing out more money than has ever been created in the entire history of the United States, um, that is concerning a lot of people especially smart money that understands how that's going to impact the dollar long-term and short-term. And so when companies are making decisions to move their cash into Bitcoin, this, has got, this is playing a part in their, in their decision-making process. So a weaker dollar will drive Bitcoin to new highs, According to Christopher Birkin, I chat about digital assets and their market structure using data. Gold's impressive returns are only outmatched by Bitcoin in 2020, i.e. 34% and 72% respectively. Now, he must be taking the $12,000 high of this year in order to get that 72% year-to-date uh, uh, profit from Bitcoin respectively. Bitcoin's superior performance suggests investors are beginning to truly see it as a, as a store of value asset and that it might be a two to one leveraged beta play on gold given the current weak dollar environment. Now notice it's two to one. The amount of money that these people made if you had invested in gold would have been 34%, but by investing in Bitcoin, they made 72%. That's double the percentage that they would have gotten out of gold. And so another reason why whales are choosing to flock towards Bitcoin. Now, Bitcoin's is, is Bitcoin facing strong resistance near $12,000? All that tells us for sure is that there's been a lot of companies that wanted, a lot of companies and individuals 
that decided, you know what, the next time Bitcoin hits $12,000, I'm going to sell my Bitcoin. And so people are taking profits. But when you look at the amount of people taking profits versus the amount of money that's actually getting held longer term, you'll notice that the amount of money held in the exchanges is, or the amount of Bitcoin held in exchanges is dropping rapidly. In other words, people sell their Bitcoin at, when the price hits $12,000, but the people that buy it are not leaving that money on the exchange. They're taking it, they buy their Bitcoin, and then they're removing it from the exchange. Because when you look at the Bitcoin balances on the exchanges, it's dwindling, and it's dwindling at a pretty good rate. And so when we bust through that $12,000 resistance, there won't be a lot of Bitcoin. There will be less Bitcoin available on the exchanges for people to actually buy. And that will be the case until people start going, okay, that's high enough. I want to take some profit. And they start moving their Bitcoin out of their cold storage, out of their wallets, off of their hardware wallets, software wallets, and putting it back on the exchanges. But right now, people are removing their Bitcoin from the exchanges. And so while there is a certain amount of resistance at this $12,000 price level, the price has basically bounced off 12K twice in one week and shows no real weakness, he noted. At worst, this is a period of consolidation. And so with time, and I think that time is days and weeks, not months and years, but I think in the near future, I believe, and this is my opinion, it's not financial advice, just as the rest of this video is. Everything that I've been saying here is my opinion, it's not financial advice, but it looks to me like we will be breaking through that $12,000 price barrier in the near future rather than down the road. So how can I be of service to you? Do you have questions? Do you have thoughts? Do you have comments? Do you disagree with something I said? Maybe you disagree with everything I said. I'd love to hear from you. Please leave your polite disagreements in the comment section below. In the meantime, do me a favor, like, subscribe, and hodl. And I hope that you have a fantastic day.